happens when you speak a dream? When you dream of a school that's a community, a community that's a school, how does it take shape? Do you carry the desks on your back up the hill, down the street, across the country? Do you keep your vision of a community sheltered or open it up and risk it being altered forever? Can one person even affect this kind of change? I don't know that I ever considered these matters as a high school student. But now, as a pending first year teacher, these questions seem of utmost relevance. For though I've not always considered my school community, it has always considered me. My evolving educator's voice has formed over the years in equal measure. One part where I came from, to one part where I am, to one part where I will be. A love of learning, a desire to understand my community, my first forays into a new world. So where would I turn to look but back where I came from? The Field School and the Enduring Voice of Elizabeth C. Ely. In 1972, a teacher named Elizabeth C. Ely founded the field school with 44 students in a small set of rooms above Regina Cleaners, a dry cleaning establishment on the corner of Connecticut Avenue and R Street in downtown Washington, D.C. By 1974, Field had grown to 97 students and needed a new home. On a famed Saturday that spring, Students, faculty, and parents convened to carry all of the school's desks, chairs, and books up Connecticut Avenue to Field's new home on Wyoming Avenue. In 2002, the Field School opened the doors on its new campus, complete with its first gymnasium, its first playing field, brand new science labs and studio spaces, and a fresh sense of potential. Though the quirks of the old campus were difficult to leave behind, Field students and teachers made sure that the new campus would be distinctive and unique. Despite Elizabeth Ely's retirement in 2006 and death from cancer in 2009, those involved with the school today still carry on her ideas. And by the end of my first year, I was invited to be the director of technology for the school. Interestingly, I got to know her in a much different level very quickly than I would have if I had just been a classroom teacher. She was incredibly charismatic and wonderful, wonderfully creative and inventive and um, spontaneous and warm uh, and funny and irreverent. Particularly with kids, uh, they just would open up to her in ways that may, they might not inter, uh, open up to other adults. And I think when parents would see that happen, they're like, oh my gosh, she's a miracle worker. And she, in a sense, was. One of the greatest strengths that she left the school was how deeply everyone felt about the place. Yeah. What I found at Field was a community beyond what I could have ever expected. Teachers who did not shy away from explaining what Walt Whitman really meant by the Red Marauder. A piece of choreography so signature that we named it after our music teacher. Caesar or Ovid abandoned to explore the origins of words and musical instruments. Teachers and students were genuinely interested in learning not just from each other, but with each other. We talk a great deal about putting in kids at ease um, so that they feel comfortable taking risks, intellectual risks, um, feel comfortable uh, thinking deeply and reflectively. And so sometimes that means having a great sense of not only community, but also a sense of, of stress levels and when, when stress is good and when stress is not so good. And, uh, we try to have a great sort of barometer on those aspects of our of the atmosphere in the community here. There's a high level of value on authenticity. You know, we'd say field kids and probably kids in general are very quick to um, sniff out a phony. So you can't go in and be something you're not. You got to come in and be who you are. We have a fairly long, sprawling campus and no center to it. So one element of it is just 
to pull people, it kind of creates a, a gravitational pull to the middle of our campus where we feel um, it will just naturally build a stronger community by the fact of everyone kind of intersecting in this central location. By keeping the school alive, um, that certainly helped keep her dream alive. The school is getting older and it's clear more and more that we need alumni to be invested and interested in the school um, so that things can, Elizabeth's vision and, and the success of the school can perpetuate into the future. So. It's even more astounding looking back on it now that the vision of one person unfolded in such a spectacular way, drawing in and elevating those who could help it grow beyond imagining. Though I can't pretend that all of my future educational communities will look like fields, and they certainly won't have that view, there is an indelible mark of the soul of such a place that cannot be defeated no matter where it's carried. Not all of Fields' methods will work where I'm going. The school will be bigger, the students different, the administration beholden to state educational standards. Despite that, I can still try to live out its ideals. If I can enhance a community with even one-tenth the spirit of Elizabeth Ely, I will consider myself lucky indeed. Thank you.